Hello everybody, it's great to welcome you. Uh, I'm Laura Perez, I'm a professor here in the Department of Ethnic Studies in the Chicano Latino Studies Program. And um, together with the Center for Latino Policy Research, and they are housed here, and the director, David Montejano, my colleague, is sitting here. Uh, together with the Center for Latino Policy Research, uh, we have come together to uh, create this evening with you a celebration for uh, the historic um, creation of a poet laureate in Berkeley. And we're so honored and so happy that Rafael Jesus Gonzalez, which many of us know through different activities, uh, uh, activism and poetry and, and art, right, his engagement at the Open Museum of Art, we're so honored that the city of Berkeley begins this beautiful tradition of honoring poetry uh, with Rafael Jesus Gonzalez. Um, I'm also really grateful that his dear friend, Gerardo uh, Marin, is also here, and he opened the program with this beautiful, gorgeous music for us, so it's lovely that you're here and also accompany us. I'm going to take a few words, because I think that to be honored as the, as the poet laureate, the first poet laureate of, of Berkeley, is such a great honor that I'm actually going to take a little bit of time to tell you a little bit about uh, both of our guests, and I'll begin with... Um, with uh, Jesus Rafael, uh, perdón, Rafael um, Jesus Gonzalez. Um, so, he, uh, uh, Rafael is a Berkeley resident. He was born and raised in El Paso and in Ciudad Juarez. After high school, he served in the U.S. Navy's Hospital Corps and in the Marine Corps as a staff sergeant. Uh, he attended the University of Texas El Paso and Mexico City's UNAM, the uh, Autonomous University of of Mexico, where he studied archaeology and the history, literature, and philosophy of Mexico. At this time, he began publishing his poetry and began also publishing his scholarly articles. Um, and then he pursued graduate studies at the University of Oregon. He's taught in many places as a professor of literature and of creative writing, including the University of Oregon, Western State College of Colorado, Central Washington State University, and was a visiting professor of philosophy at his alma mater, University of Texas in Paso. Here in the Bay Area, I didn't know this, he founded the Department of Mexican and Latin American Studies at Laney College. His poetry and scholarly work have been published internationally in various anthologies. His own collections of poetry include El Hacedor de Juegos, The Maker of Games. It was uh, published in two editions, uh, by Casa Editorial in San Francisco, and a selection of his moon poems, La Musa Lunatica, The Lunatic Muse, was published by Pandemonium Press in Berkeley in 2009. He's been nominated for the prestigious literary Pushcart Prize three times. Um, in 1996, he was named Poet in Residence at the Oakland Museum of California and at the Oakland Public Library, so you can see it building up right towards the Poet Laureate of Berkeley, and he was twice the recipient of a Literary Achievement Award by Dragonfly Press in 2002 and 2012. He was featured poet at the San Jose Poetry Center in San, nearby San Jose in 2005, and that same year he was invited to read his poetry at the World Congress of Poets in China. In 2006, he was named Universal Ambassador of Peace um, in Geneva, Switzerland, and he presented his work in Montevideo at the 8th International Literary Encuentro and also in Havana, Cuba. Uh, in 2013, he received the Cesar Chavez Lifetime Award. The city of Berkeley also honored him with a Lifetime Achievement Award. And in 2015, uh, oh, in 2015, sorry, at the 13th Annual Poetry Festival that Berkeley holds. Rafael Jesus Gonzalez is also, as some of you may know, a visual artist. His work has been exhibited at the Mexican Museum in San Francisco, at the Galeria de la Raza, at the Oakland Museum of Art, and at the Charles Ellis Art Museum in Milwaukee. Rafael's altar installation, Ofrenda a Artistas Muertos en Proceso de Migración, Offering for Artists Who Died in the Process of Migration, it's probably a terrible translation, right? Is part of the Metamorphosis and Migration Days of the Dead exhibition that's still up at the Oka Museum of Art. It'll be up until January 14th. So everybody try to go look at that. They always have great exhibitions there, and it will be wonderful to see Rafael. Gerardo Omar Marin, as you saw, <coughs> 
is a musician, but he's also an activist, he's a healer, he's an educator, and he's a mentor. His talents and activism are multiple and evident in his intercultural unity work with youth. Um, and his activism on behalf of Mother Earth, Abhyayana, um, rights, Mother Earth rights across the continent, and social justice and spiritual activist work. He mentors youth, community organizers, and educators in indigenous mindfulness, ritual, and inner resilience practices to recharge our souls and bodies and facilitate circles that include physical training, dance, stress relief, breathing techniques, and relaxing mediation. I was telling him that we very much need him here at Berkeley, and I hope that he's going to be able to come back in the spring semester, not for a lecture, but for actually to lead us in practice, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Um, and he's also a trainer uh, in and Oyin Teotl movement building mentor for uh, an organization called Rooted in Community, which is a national youth food sovereignty and justice network, which is actually how I first heard about you through Marcelo Garso, right? Through food justice for people of color. Um, so I, you know, in closing, um, I want to say how truly pleased and honored we are to welcome these two beautiful spirits uh, to this campus and to Shore House, where we have for two years now, uh, with David at the helm, Genaro Padilla, who's here from English, also very much, you know, at the helm, where we've been trying to organize a hub for the Latino community and especially the faculty. So to have this whole house instead of just a little room on the third floor is a really symbolic and powerful accomplishment. And we hope that events like this will continue to open the door so that our entire community, not just at UC Berkeley, but beyond, will feel welcome here. So um, there's. I want to also, before I hand it over to the reason we're all here, I also just want to present this uh, beautiful bouquet of flowers because when I thought, what is it that we can honor a poet with? Uh, a poet who is the work of the spirit, the soul, sweetness, you know, and the courage of the heart. I thought flowers are ephemeral, right? They don't last forever, but flowers are one of the most beautiful things we can get. So this is a small token of our appreciation for you. Yeah. Please join me in welcome. So now for the good stuff. And I can give you what I can hold this for you. I'll put them in here. Gracias, Professor. Pero 
sabiendo que muchos de nosotros no hablan el español, hablemos en la lengua del imperio, el inglés, ¿eh? que como todo idioma tiene su propia belleza. Um, as Laura mentioned, I was born right on the border of El Paso Juarez area. So consequently, I'm heir to two muses who speak different languages. But they, but that was one of the advantages of being on the, on the frontera, on the border, is that uh, I was fortunate enough to have those two muses. And more often than not, they speak to me uh, simultaneously. <clears throat> I really thought a great deal of what I would present to you today, I think. And uh, <clears throat> I thought I would work with themes and so on and so forth, but then I became overwhelmed with what I had to look through. So I just picked up a bunch of things, and some will jive and some of it will not. <clears throat> uh, and so here goes. You make of it what you will. Afterwards, we'll have a, a, a chance for some questions and answers, right? Yes. <clears throat> Siendo nombrado el primer poeta laureado de la ciudad, acepto la burelias que se me otorgan con gracias, humildemente, sabiendo que hay muchos otros más dignos de ser nombrados primer poeta laureado de la ciudad desde que se fundó. Poeta una vez se nombraba de la Ruel por su elocuencia en alabar al rey, a la nación, a la ciudad. Pero se me conoce por ser muy particular en lo y a quien alabo. No llevaré levemente mis laureles en honor de la ciudad querida para alabar cuando sirva la justicia para protestar cuando no. I accept the laurels conferred upon me with thanks and humbly knowing there are many more worthy to be named first poet laureate of the city since its founding. Poets were once laurel crowned for their eloquence in praising the king, the nation, the city. But I am known to be most particular in what and whom I praise. I will not wear my laurels lightly in honor of the beloved city to praise when it serves justice, to protest when it does not. Son peligrosos los poetas. Suelen decir verdaderes, verdades inconvenientes, palabras que incomodan, no veneran las fronteras. Para ellos, la lengua es instrumento para derribar paredes, para romper los cercos, para abrir los caminos por donde nos llegan los dioses. Son reverentes, son blasfemos, confunden el sacramento y la juerga, confunden las tabernas y los templos, Son peligrosos los poetas. <laughs> Poets are dangerous. They often tell inconvenient truths, words that discomfort. They do not respect borders. For them, the tongue is a tool to bring down walls, to tear down fences, to open roads through which the gods come. They are reverent. They are blasphemous. They confuse the sacrament and the rabble. They confuse the taverns and the temples. The poets are dangerous. 
poeta. Poeta eres tú que lees, grafito en una pared de La Habana. El poeta dice sus versos al deslizarse el lápiz sobre el blanco. Enigmas de quimeras y dragones, de lirios y de jaras, de nubes pesadas como plomo, peñascos livianos como suspiros. Allí quedan, ni más ni menos encantados que una mosca prisionera en una gota de ámbar. Allí esperan que los rescate otro poeta. Tú, lector, que descifras estas letras. Uh, en Habana, when I was there to present a paper and we were reading for an uh, international literary conference, uh, I came across a wall. Uh, and on it, this large graffiti on it that read, Poeta eres tú que lees. Uh, uh, poet are you who reads. Uh, by the way, Cuba is one of the most literate countries in the world. Mm -hmm. It is 99% literate. Uh, and you can talk to a taxi driver about practically any subject. It, the poet says his verses as a pencil glides over the blank. Enigmas of chimeras and dragons, of lilies and darts, of clouds heavy as lead, boulders light as sighs. There they remain, no more, no less enchanted than a fly, imprisoned in a drop of amber. There they wait to be rescued by another poet, you, reader, who deciphers this lines. Venga madre, su rebozo arrastra de la araña negra y sus enaguas le enredan los tobillos. Hoy al peso de sus años en trémulo bastón y sus manos temblorosas empujan sobre el mostrador sentados sudados. Aún todavía ve viejecita la jara de su aguja arrastrando colores, las flores que bordan con hilazas de a tres por diez, no se marchitan tan pronto como las hojas del tiempo. ¿Qué cosas recuerda? Su boca parece constantemente saborear los restos de años rellenos de miel. 
¿Dónde están los hijos que parió? Hablan ahora solamente inglés y dicen que son hispanos. Sé que un día no vendrá a pedirme lo que, esco que la escoja los matices que ya no pueda ver. Sé que esperaré en vano la bendición desentada. Miraré hacia la calle por morienta, refrescada por alas de paloma, hasta que un chiquillo mugroso me jale de la manga y me pregunte, Señor, how much is this? To an old woman. Come, mother. Your rebozo trails a black web and your hem catches on your heels. You lean the burden of your years on shaky cane and passing hand pushes sweat-grimed pennies on the counter. Can you still see, old woman, the darting color-trailed needle of your trade? The flowers you embroider with three for a dime threads cannot fade as quickly as the leaves of time. What things do you remember? Your mouth seems to be forever tasting the residue of nectar-hearted years. Where are the sons you bore? Do they speak only English now and say they're Spanish? One day, I know you will not come and ask for me to pick the colors you can no longer see. I know I'll wait in vain for your toothless benediction. I'll look into the dusty street, made cool by pigeons' wings, until a dirty child will nudge me and say, Senor, how much is this? Too much. Much too much. Much too much to lose our cultures, our traditions, and our language. Nothing is worth that. Los mapas mienten. Here's an epigram by Maya Ramond. Borders are scratched across the hearts of men by strangers with a common <coughs> judicial pen. And when the borders bleed, <coughs> We watch with dread the lights of ink across the map turn red. Mienten los mapas. Son colchas de parches sin sentido, de colores pasteles, lila, celeste, lima, limón, naranja, rosa, con hombres, costuras arbitrarias con que imaginamos a la tierra pretendiendo poseerla y le llamamos mundo. La tierra no tiene costuras, ni fronteras, ríos y barrancas, sierras, pan, pantanos, desfiladeros, junglas y desiertos, cascadas y saltos, mares, sí, pero nunca fronteras. Los mapas mienten. Maps lie. They are crazy quilts of pastel colors. Lilac, sky, lime, lemon, orange, pink. With arbitrary names and seams with which we imagine the earth pretending to possess it and call it world. <coughs> the earth does not have seams nor borders. Rivers and ravines Sierras, swamps, canyons, jungles and deserts, cascades and falls, seas, yes, but never borders. Maps lie. <coughs> ¿Qué sabe la mariposa de fronteras? ¿Qué sabe de banderas? Cruza todo un continente el movimiento su herencia. Así es con nosotros. Nuestra historia, migración de años, de siglos, de milenios, antes de que historia hubiera, 
y que formáramos mitos en el cerebro. Nuestros pasos hechos de sangre, de lágrimas, de risa, de sudor, marcan nuestra eterna búsqueda de hogar celalado por el Dios, o el águila comiéndose una culebra, o quién sabe qué sellas arbitrarias. Pero son inseguras nuestras moradas. Hogar es la tierra redonda y sin costura. La circundamos y si patria veneramos, es pretensión, es mito, es mentira. Buscamos abrigo, alimento, libertad, la vida, abajo con fronteras, abajo con banderas, que si justicia y paz hubiera, no tuviéramos que vagar tanto por la tierra. What does the butterfly know about migration of borders? What does it know of flags? It crosses the whole continent, movement is inheritance. So it is with us. Migration, our heritage of years, of centuries, of millenniums, before history was. And we formed myths within the brain. Our steps, made of blood, of tears, of laughter and of sweat, mark our eternal search for home, signaled by the God or the eagle eating a snake, or who knows what arbitrary signs, but uncertain of our abodes. Home is the round and seamless earth. We circle it, and if country we venerate, it is a pretension, a myth, a lie. We seek shelter, freedom, life, down with borders, down with flags. For if there were justice and peace, we would not have to so much roam the earth. Dicen los bobos que venimos de bendigos. Estómagos vacíos, vacías las manos, para quitarles los que ya sus propios canallas les robaron y bribones les robaron. Sí, venimos con hambre, huyendo de la violencia, a donde la riqueza del imperio se concentra, pero con las manos llenas de nuestras artesanías y labores, corazones llenos de bailes y canciones, con nuestra cocina rica en sabores. Le traemos alma a una cultura desalmada. Traemos el arco iris y prefieren el gris de sus temores. Se empeñan en construir muros si lo que se necesita es puentes. To say it clearly, the fool say, that we come as beggars, stomachs empty, empty hands, to take what already their own scoundrels and knaves have stolen from them. Yes, we come hungry, fleeing violence, to where the riches of the empire are concentrated, but with hands full of our crafts and labors, Hearts full of dances and of songs, with our customs, cuisines, rich in flavors. We bring soul to a soulless culture. We bring the rainbow, and they prefer the grayness of their fear. They insist on building walls where there is need of bridges. El país que echa fuera por falta de documentos a sus soñadores se hiere a sí mismo. 
¿Qué otra tierra conocen? ¿Qué vacío dejarían en la conciencia, en el corazón del pueblo? Es arrancarle las balanzas a la justicia, apagarle la antorcha a la libertad. Sería como si el águila con su propio pico y sus garras se desgarrara su propio, propio corazón ya envenenado por la crueldad. De fronteras y muros, los sueños y la necesidad saben lo mismo que las mariposas y las aves, el olor de las flores. Si no protegemos a nuestros soñadores, perdemos nuestras almas y sueños. By dreamers. The country that casts out for lack of documents its dreamers wounds itself. What other land do they know? What emptiness would they leave in the consciousness, in the hearts of the people? It is to tear the scales from justice, to put out the torch of liberty. It would be as if the eagle with its own beak and its claws lacerated its own heart, already poisoned by cruelty. A borders and walls dreams and need know the same as do the butterflies and the birds the smell of flowers if we do not protect our dreamers we lose our souls and our dreams of Casals tender wrestling with Bach, Barcelona's Ramblas by moonlight, the clams love life on Cape Cod or Vietnam. And suddenly one boy shatters his sulk, 
some dirty city star long ago swallowed by your sight, surprised by awareness, shoots, tear washed and sharpened from his eyes. Interview. I brought you a yellow chrysanthemum, like a sudden puff of colored smoke. Was Steinbach, Steinbeck thrilled by the shape of napalm because it blooms like a full blown mum? We traveled backwards in time. So, what could I answer about teaching the hurting out of poems to young kids? I have forgotten the formula, if I ever knew it. <clears throat> it comes to you suddenly, like a bearded lady at the laundromat, or being handed a day-old rose in the Pittsburgh airport merely because. To tell them I play by ear sounds facile. Playing it by the heart is no better. And I suspect what they look for is someone to give them the comfort a poem cannot. A mis estudiantes. Un epigrama. Quisiera saber lo que dicen esas basuritas. Tahumara analfabeta. Tú que sabes leer, no lo tomes, por supuesto. Tú que no sabes, hay mundos, hay dioses todavía por vivir en tus sueños. Los mundos esperan formarse en tu lengua. Los dioses temblar en tus oídos. Esas marquitas en la página, negras como suciedad de mosca y tan pequeñas, te hablan. Tú no las oyes. No te puedo decir el comienzo del nombramiento. Solo cómo cambia y qué magia chispea y relumbra en la base del cerebro. No sé si haya respuesta. Tal vez sea suficiente nuestro decir. Los hombres, las mujeres han muerto siempre solos. Estas basuritas en la página, su último legado. No las piernas, estas semillas encantadas de nuestros luceros. To my students, and it has a, yeah, an epigram. Uh, quisiera saber lo que dicen esas basuritas. Uh, translated, I would like to know what the little fly specks mean. Mm -hmm. And it was said by, uh, 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 by an illiter illiterate uh, uh, Tarumara Indian to, uh, to the village uh, uh, teacher. Mm -hmm. The Tarumaras are from the region where I come from, the Chihuahua Desert. Mm -hmm. You can read. Mm -hmm. Do not take it for granted. You cannot. There are words, there are gods, yet to be quickened in your dreams. The world's a way to form your tongue, the gods to tremble in your ears. These little marks, black as fly droppings on the page, and as small speak to you, you do not hear. I cannot tell you the beginning of me, only how it changes and magic sparks and sputters at the base of the skull. I do not know if there's answer. Perhaps their speaking is enough. Men, women have died always alone. This small blemishes on the page, their final legacy. Do not lose them. These, the enchanted cinders of our stars.
it. Well, my condition is that nothing is not political. Even sitting back and doing nothing is a political action. In my work, is, you know, we begin to suspect language is, is an obsession. <coughs> language is language. And uh, yes, I, those are my concerns are uh, justice, human suffering. And I guess that makes me, that makes me a political poet. And uh, the celebration of life. <coughs> And that too is a political action. <coughs> Peligros de la amistad. Razona la postura que tomé al llegar a las orillas de tu pensar, sin ser invitado, mas por el instinto de mi aliento. No reclamé los frutos que sacudiste de las ramas de la garganta, no violé las señales de mi no es orgullo que le impone ganchos al silencio de la lengua que desencadenada daña los minutos de la época. Paro incierto al umbral de tu rabia, no lo abiertamente como espejos rotos por pláticas importunadas de los libros, sino apretado como almejas a la insolencia del aire. Escucho la sangre gusta bien en la boca del corazón. Es tanto que los minutos vuelan a la trampa brillante de tu ánimo sin herida. Compartimos lluvias de las regiones de nuestras sequías y aliviando las dudas de cada uno, endosamos nuestras propias desesperanzas. Form, form, Moro ecuaciones de peligro para quien intente estudiar la fisiología de espejos en tus ojos. The perils of friendship. Recent the stance I took on coming to the edges of your thought, unbidden but by the instincts of my breath. I did not claim the fruit you shook from the branches of your throat, nor encroached upon the tokens of my death. It is not pride that fastens hooks upon the silence of my tongue, which unfettered tolls the minutes of our age. I stop uncertain to the threshold of your rage, no not open as shovel glasses shattered by discourses <clears throat> importune from books, but tight as clamps to the insolence of air. I listen. The blood tastes good in the heart's mouth as minutes fly into the brilliant snare of your unwounded mood. We exchange rain from the regions of our drought and in alleviating one another's doubt, endorse our own despair. Our formulated de equations of danger for anyone who tries to study the physiology of mirrors in your eyes. El loco. Permíteme enseñarte la locura. Ver la calavera en la rosa blanca. Su mollera un espejo en que los laberintos del pensar se pierden. El perro fiel ladra tus tobillos, pero el precipicio llama. Ahí están los ángeles precisos, no para impedir tu caída, sino para resistirla. Con eso basta. The fool. <coughs> you might recognize it. Let me teach you madness. To see the skull in the white rose, it's paint a mirror in which the labyrinths of thought are lost. The loyal dog barks at your feet heels, but the precipice beckons. The necessary angels are there, 
not to break your fall, but to witness it. That is enough. You may have recognized the cup, but the rope. Kipo Kamayokuna. Me he hecho tenedor de los nudos. Su significado se ha perdido. Son confusos los números. Temo los hilos rojos y espero soldados que no vienen. Los amarillos no llevan al oro y los blancos no a la plata, sino a los huesos de ayer limpios como la luna y lo doble de fríos. Los verdes al maíz, parco y seco. Tengo fiebre y tengo el cerebro entumido con la enfermedad de un hombre que no duerme por el ruido de las estrellas. Kipu Kamayokuna. Does, does that word have any resonance? Kipu Kamayokuna was the record keeper mm -hmm. of the ancient peoples of Peru, mm -hmm. of Los Andes. Huh? And it was a very highly advanced civilization that didn't have writing. What they had was a custom of wearing of their, uh, their shamans, their priests, their wise uh, persons, wearing intricate bracelets of strings with knots. Mm -hmm. And those strings and knots, they counted with, and they were records of their histories. Kipo mm -hmm. Kamayokuna. I have become keeper of the knots. Their meanings are lost. Their numbers are confused. I lie in fear of the red nut strings and wait for soldiers that never come. The yellow do not lead to gold, and the white lead not to silver, but to last year's bones, clean as the moon and twice as cold. The green corn, scanty and dry. I have a fever, and my brain is numb with the sickness of a man who cannot sleep for the noise of the stars. El lunar, al modo arábigo andaluz. Ese lunar que tienes es una abeja negra que llegó a la luna y está loca, pues no sabe si chupar la miel de rosa que es tu mejilla o la miel de clavel que es tu boca. The beauty mark in the Arabic and the Lucian mode. The beauty, beauty mark you have is a black bee that came to the moon and is mad, for it knows not if to suck the rose honey that is your cheek, or the carnation honey that is your mouth. Canto de viento para la hija del príncipe Enrique. En el epigrama de Antonio Machado, cuatro cosas tiene el mar. Perdone. Cuatro cosas tiene el hombre que no sirven en la mar. Ancla, gobernalla y remos y el miedo de naufragar. A Carmen. Lleva un sextante para ver las estrellas y partir el firmamento en seis pedazos. Lleva un astrolabio porque tiene un hombre hermoso y cera de abeja, no contra el canto de las sirenas, que no te quisieras perder, sino porque querrás 
el olor de las flores, por un momento el mar color de vino. Lleva una palabra secreta que querrás voltear y amasar en la mente. Los nombres de algunos amigos con cuales invocar a los ángeles y un pequeño espejo grabado con este hechizo. Hay solo un centro del universo y se muda a donde quiera que estés. Wind song for Prince Henry's daughter. And the epigram is from Antonio Machado, a Spanish poet, and uh, usually translated is uh, four things as man that are no use to him on the sea. Uh, anchor, rudder, and oars, and the fear of drowning. For Carmen. Take a text sextant to watch the stars fly, and cut the firmament in six. Take an astrolabe because it has a lovely name, and beeswax, not against the siren song you wouldn't want to miss, but because you might want the smell of flowers just for one moment on the wide dark sea. Take one secret word you'll want to roll and need within your mind, a few friends' names to invoke the angels by, and a small smear scratched with this charm. There is one center to the universe, and it moves to wherever you are. Always remember that. There is one center to the universe, and that center is where you are. Cuento de nunca acabar. Esta es una carta, letra a letra, en ella canta el abecedario de los instantes, peregrinos absortos del pasado, del presente y del quizás, heridas de los anhelos, esas saetas cristalinas del querer. Dice, te amo, y lo repite, lo varía, refrán interminable, cuento de nunca acabar. Te lo cuento otra vez. Story without end. This is a letter, letter by letter. In it sings the alphabet of instants, engrossed pilgrims of the past, of the present, of perhaps, wounds of longing, those crystal arrows of love. It says, I love you, and repeats it, varies it, endless refrain, story without end. Shall I tell it to you again? Enfoque. El ojo de la cámara parpadea. Captura la imagen para siempre, impecable en su quietud. Pero si su ojo, una vez abierto, no cerrara, repitiera la imagen otra y otra vez, superpuesta, levemente cambiada, mutable, obsesiva, hay consuelo en una foto, la visión súbitamente cristalizada, llevada fuera del tiempo, pero la vida, lee amor, raras veces se para tan fácilmente. Focus. The eye of the camera blinks, captures the image, once and for all, impeccable in stillness. But if its eye, once open, wouldn't close, Repeated the image over and over again, superimposed, slightly shifted, mutable, obsessive. There is comfort in a photo. The vision suddenly crystallized, taken out of time. But life, read love, is seldom stopped that easily. Mm -hmm.
you're all very brave. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's very difficult to listen to poetry. No. Because it takes as much effort for the hearer to reconstruct it in the head as it takes to, to write one. Remember that as always, you're always when you read and when you listen to poetry, you're put into the place of being poets. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. let me just finish uh, with a couple more, and then uh, we'll open it for some, for some questions or discussion or whatever you'd like. I'll just, I'll just read it in English. <clears throat> and uh, it's entitled Here for Life. Uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base, January 1983, first blockade of the MX missile testing. This particular uh, poem has the distinction of having been written in jail, mm -hmm. where I was imprisoned with about 500 of my fellow protesters mm -hmm. in an effort to stop the testing of the MX missile, which you may recall was the first strike missile uh, developed by uh, Ronald Reagan, mm -hmm. a Californian. <laughs> And uh, here for life. <clears throat> I am here. I wear the old one's jade. It's like they said, and precious. Turquoise of salt to hold my visions, and coral to cultivate the heart, mother of pearl for purity. I have put on what power I could to tell you there are mountains where the stones sleep, hawks nest there, and lichens older than the ice is cold. The sea is vast and deep, keeping secrets dark when the rocks are hard. I am here to tell you the earth is made of things. So much themselves they make the angels kneel. We walk among them, and they are certain as the rain is wet, and they are fragile as the pine is tall. We do belong to them. They count upon our singing, the footfalls of our dance, our children's shouts, their laughter. I am here for the unfinished song, the uncompleted dance, the healing, the dreadful fakes of love. I am here for life, and I will not go away. And that's a promise and a challenge. That's a promise to you all. Until breath leaves me, I will not keep silent, uh, especially in these times. Mm -hmm. We're living upon a upfront fascist government. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the end of an empire mm -hmm. uh, whose, economics, whose economics of empire have brought the earth to the edge that they may not be able to sustain human life for much. Mm -hmm. I wish I were better of more mm -hmm. cheerful news, mm -hmm. but we have to remind ourselves that this is so. Uh, and uh, that's where we are. Mm -hmm. In 2005, I was invited to present the paper and, and to read at the World Congress of Poets, Poets in Beijing, China. <clears throat> and I really, uh, 
I, I really wondered and I was obsessed, what am I going to tell my fellow poets from around the world, from around the earth, uh, many of whom, or probably most of whom, did not speak either of the languages in which I spoke. And then driving back from uh, Pilgrimage to Chimayo in New Mexico, uh, I wrote this. Si no hablamos, si no hablamos para celebrar, alabar a la tierra, es mejor que guardemos silencio. Lo al aire que llena el fuelle del pulmón y alimenta la sangre del corazón, que lleva la luz, el olor de las flores y los mares, los cantos de las aves y el aullido del viento que conspira con la distancia para ser azul el monte. Loa al fuego, que alumbra el día y calienta la noche, cuece nuestro alimento y da ímpetu a nuestra voluntad, que es el corazón de la tierra, este fragmento de lucero que quema y purifica por bien o por mal. Loa al agua, que hace a los ríos y a los mares, da sustancia a la nube y a nosotros, que hace verde a los bosques y los campos, que hincha el fruto y empieza nuestro nacer. Loa la tierra, que es el suelo, la montaña, las piedras, que lleva a los bosques y es la arena del desierto, que nos forma los huesos y sala los mares, la sangre, que es nuestro hogar y sitio. Si no alabamos, si no hablamos en la alabanza a la tierra, si no cantamos en festejo a la vida, es mejor que guardemos silencio. If we do not speak to praise the earth, it is best we keep silent. Praise air that fills the bellows of the lung and feeds our heart's blood, that carries light, the smell of flowers and the seas, the songs of birds and the winds howl, that conspires with distance to make the mountains bloom. Praise fire that lights the day and warms the night, cooks our food and gives motion to our wills, that is the heart of earth, this fragment of a star that burns and purifies for good or ill. Praise water that makes the rivers and the seas, that gives substance to the clouds and us, that makes green the forest, and the fields that swells the fruit and wombs our birth. Praise earth is the ground, the mountain and the stones that holds the forest and is the desert sand that builds our bones and salts the seas, the blood. There is our home and place. If we do not speak in praise of the earth, if we do not sing in celebration of life, it is best we keep silence.